You're watching Sports Force Extra on KTIV. Welcome back, folks. Tell you what, this year we thought, well, we'd implement a few new things into Sports Force Extra, and that includes this right here, our game of the week. And this week, we have a treat for you in the depths of Nebraska. So let's get a look at Howell's Dodge and Neely Oakdale in this week's Sports Force Game of the Week. All right, that's right. This week's Game of the Week features two small town Nebraska teams with big goals. Neely Oakdale made it all the way to Memorial Stadium last season. They look to jump out of the gates this season as they take on Hal's Dodge. We're going to just jump right out into the action here in Neely. 26-26 in the third quarter, and this ball from Bryson Gatekin to Colson Krebs puts the Warriors on top of the Jags, 32-26. But the Jags are still on the hunt here on a third down connection. They're connecting right here on a prayer. Colton Closen snags it, stays in. He's going to set up the Jags with great field position. Just a few plays later, Hunter Luther takes the pitch for the Jags. Outruns the Warriors all the way to the edge here. And after a two-point conversion, Jags take the 34-32 lead. Warriors now in desperation mode. And the deep pass from Gattakin is undercut by Lane Bellina. That would be the beginning of the end as the Jags topple the Warriors 42-32. Sports Force's Irvin Doman was at this game. He joins us live from Neely with a recap of the action. Irvin. Yes, Amber, like you said earlier, this thing was neck and neck going into halftime, 26 to 26. And, well, that's what we came to expect from these two squads. Neely Oakdale, like you said, making it to Memorial Stadium for D1 action. Howells Dodge making it there last year in D2 action. So when it came to tonight's game, it was just going to be who was more poised in that bully ball style of play they love to play here in Northeast Nebraska. And for the Jaguars, well, that would be them. They would come out, play their style of game, and their style of game was one that maybe will lead to success in later in the season. Well, I thought early on it, it was obvious that both teams had some young kids and they uh, um, first time starters, but I thought they did a really good job with the Gattican kid uh, running him. You know, and we weren't getting lined up properly, and, and that goes back to coaching. I got to do a better job. We just had some breakdowns early on, and, and we slowly started to, to correct those. I think both teams are going to get a heck of a lot better as the year goes on. And Howells Dodge will pick up the season next week against Fullerton, where they look to go 2-0, and and Neely Oakdale will look to bounce back and get in the win column against Guardian Angels Central Catholic. Back to you guys in the studio. All right, thank you very much, Urban. Down the road in Pender, though, one of the best nicknames in Siouxland, the Pendragons hosting Elkhorn Valley. Pendragons would open up the second half with impeccable defense. Trent Hansen holds Mason Nitz, and Owen Kneifel completes the sack there. A few plays later, Aiden Beckman's in line for a great catch, but here comes Nate Decker from behind for the interception in the end zone. What a play there on the defense later on. The Elkhorn Valley quarterback, a little underhand toss to Maverick Hageman. Hageman fights his way in for the touchdown. Touchdown, but that wasn't or enough for the Falcons. They toss to Corbin Werner here after a little rollout, actually. There's the toss. There's Werner with the catch. Two-point conversion. Elkhorn Valley wins over the Penn Dragons 20 to 14. Over in Wayne America, the Blue Devils dealing with Omaha Ron Cali. Opening up the game here. It's Brady McGill throwing a dime to Luke Orr, putting the first seven on the board for the night. After a safety, the Pride have a 9-0 lead here, but they get to receive again, but not too fast. They fumble the ball. It goes back to the Blue Devils. That would cost Ron Colley Catholic as Caden Keller throws to lead Sam Jug for the perfect pass and touchdown to close out the first quarter. Omaha Ron Cali would end up getting the upset, though, on the road, taking the win 43-33. to Hey, back into Iowa over in Lamar's. Galen Catholic hosting Hinton. Blackhawks, they lead 3-0 coming out of the break in their defense. Coming up big against the number nine Jays. There's a fumbled snap for Galen, and Carson Divis falls on it. That gives Hinton the ball deep in Galen territory. Blackhawks take full advantage of the turnover. Gabe Anderson on the read option, keeps himself, breaks the plane into the end zone, and Hinton takes a 10-0 lead. We'll fast forward late in the fourth. Last gasp for the Jays. Cole McCarty going deep, but this pass ends up in the wrong hands. Cole Fryson picks it off. That puts the game on ice. Hinton upsets Galen 
10-0 on the road. Tell you what, folks, Sports Force's Connor Trett was in Lamar's covering that action tonight. And Connor, what do you think made the difference in this battle of the birds here? Well, I think that the thing that stood out here in the Battle of the Birds obviously was the Hinton defense. This team came in tonight with relatively unknown players, people that were making huge statements last season, but they came together as a unit and shut down the number nine team in the state of Iowa, in the state of Iowa Class 1A, I should say. And I was able to catch up with Hinton's head coach, Kadrian Harderson, about his thoughts on his defense's performance here in week one. Defensively, pitching a shutout, I thought that was fantastic. The boys, they, they bent, but they never broke. They got down in the red zone a couple times and, and we stuffed them both times. So I was really proud of the effort, really proud of the uh, overcoming adversity that they showed. So yeah, it was, a, it was a good week one win, something to build off of. You know, yep. Opportune turnovers, they were, they, were, they were massive for us. You know, a lot of times the game starts going. Now for the, now for the Blackhawks, the road won't get much easier as they have the, the Western Christian Wolfpack on the road next week. And the, for the Jays, they look to bounce back on the road against MMCRU next week. All right, thank you, Connor. Let's take it back across the border into South Dakota as the Bucks of Yankton look to pop the Colonels of Mitchell. First quarter, Yankton's Lucas camps off. He's wearing number 11, and he takes it in from 11 yards out. You know, sometimes life just works that way. Bucks lead 7 0. Yankton. They're also getting things done on the defensive side of the ball. Easton Nelson hunts down Parker Denny here for a loss. Big play there. Now in the second, second play of the quarter, Cam Schaff, he gets the call again, and he'll just take a nice little stroll on in for the score. Bucks offense firing on all cylinders. They win 42 to nothing over Mitchell. And the defending South Dakota Class 11B state champs taking on Baltic. Second game of the year. It doesn't take long for the Huskies to pounce. Gunner Ewing gets his hands on the rock, rumbles in for the first TD of the game. Two-point conversion is good. EPJ leads 8-0. And look at that color to celebrate. Second quarter now, Keaton Gale hands off to Jacob Gale. He cruises in with a nice little flex right here. Huskies are up 20 to six. Later on in the second, EPJ going airborne. Keaton Gale fires one to Carson Timmons. Unbelievable pass right through those Baltic hands. That makes it 28 to six. Why not add one more folks? Keaton Gale firing the dime to Grayson Gerard to add more insurance. EPJ cruises to another win, 41 to six. Time now for Fan Force. We get to see how you all were enjoying those Friday night lights tonight. Jason, what do we got here? Well, let's get right into this. First up from Jill Schoenher. She shared this photo of her son Henry with his Sports Force Extra Football supporting the Hinton Blackhawks. Next, go over to Wayne America where Denise shared this photo. That blue, devil blue, tell you what. Matches this mini football perfectly, doesn't it, Amber? Yeah, and finally, we're going to go back to Hinton. Gabby Friesen said they really want to be on the news. Well, it's your lucky day. Love the school spirit out there. Don't forget, you can send in your Fan Force photos each week to connect at KTV.com for a chance to see them on the air. We're the Elk Point Cheerleaders, and Sports Force Extra will be right back. Woo! 